What's up guys, Vexen here, and today I'm going to be finding out if Varsity Gaming is actually good at Rainbow Six Siege. That's right, it is a creator of odd review time, let's get right into it. So, as we all know, Varsity Gaming is pretty big, like million sub YouTuber, been playing Rainbow Six Siege since the beginning, and I've watched some of his streams. To be fair, I've always been like, hey, he's a relatively competent player, but I'll be breaking down exactly what he's doing good and what he's not doing good without reviewing to see if he's actually legitimately good at the game and if you can probably watch him and, you know, learn a thing or two. I think I probably, probably could watch him, but I'm actually going to see if he's good at Rainbow Six Siege or if he's just getting lucky some of these times and only uploading the good angles. First things first, he's actually playing uh, Justin from Mirage, a uh, guy I, I play with and against pretty often in, in staff TMs, which is kind of a 10-man thing. He's actually not a bad player. So first of all, first he's playing someone who's pretty competent and we'll, we'll see how he fares ban phase going on we've got a knock ban we've got a kaid ban we've got a valkyrie ban uh it is going to be on coastline not bad these are pretty pretty solid bands so yeah i mean overall like bands seem pretty bog standard nothing crazy okay so it looks like playing a pretty like solid stack yeah, Nyx, Glomoji, Justin. Yeah, so he's, he's playing like a, like this is a competent stack. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be, it's interesting to see how it's gonna play out. Hmm. All right, the Grim play round one. Yeah, Grim's pretty solid. It's like nothing crazy. Droning, proper drones. I'm not like I'm not the biggest fan of like what he just did right there, which is like you know shooting when he crosses, because like hey, if you shoot when you cross, it's a really easy way to get spammed back. That being said, though, like hey, it's still like he's probably fine to be honest. These are pretty solid, moving someone out of position. Pretty good use of utility. So one thing I will say here that I'm not a big fan of RC's game so far is he's not playing with this team, right? So it looks like their warden just got a pick. I'm not too sure where they got that pick at. My assumption is going to be sunrise. I don't think that warden is going to be up playing above. So uh, just under that like just kind of presumption is that hey like he's playing sunrise. It would actually make more sense for varsity and be more impactful for varsity to play with Ziana and Jackal who are kind of doing a sunrise overtake and applying pressure there to the map. Now he is applying pressure here and he's taking someone's uh, attention away. But the likelihood of that person rotating the sunrise is pretty low considering this is one of their anchors and he does kind of have to play on site regardless. So I think that he would be getting more impact playing with a team. Is this a bad thing that he's doing here? No, but I don't think it's the most optimal thing he could be doing in this sense. I also do make the same mistake as a solo queue player, and Varsity is kind of traditionally a solo queue player where you do kind of screw off, do your own thing, and that is kind of how you get impact and provide value to the team by being impactful somewhere else while they're doing something. So from that sense, I think, you know, he's just kind of doing this out of habit, though it would make a little bit more sense if he was playing with his Iana and his Jackal to kind of secure that Sunrise, secure that uh, Hookah, secure that side of the map over. So I really did not like that play from Varsity, and, and here's why, right? Again, he could be helping his teammates, but he's, he's just no information. Yeah, he did put the bees down, so he does have the ability to take some space right there. And while that is a strong position to, to do that, and it does make a lot of sense to do that, he's pushing into a Fenrir. And because he's pushing into the Fenrir, someone could have easily crossed at any given time without him seeing or repositioned without him seeing and or hearing because there's a slight audio cue to the Fenrir device, which makes it, you know, actually pretty strong. So in, in that regard, what he's done here is he's actually kind of just thrown uh, his life away uh, I, I really did not like this play uh out, out of him there pushing that in and so far round one i i'm he's kind of kind of looking like a fish out of water kind of looking like a real gold player here his team does pick up the round which is nice uh just kind of killing everyone which is you love to see that but overall i was very uh unimpressed by the round one gameplay from good old varsity Mm, that's why. Yeah, because I did like a side-by-side comparison. If I posted a video on my Twitter about it, it's like twice as fast and stays twice as long. I, wow, that's the first time I've done that. I was on the average capture session before. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I didn't tell us anything about that. So when I got on the like, on test run, the early capture, we just wanted to say, like, didn't do anything to us. Was there a server? 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 I mean, we mentioned to each other that they have, like, a Ubisoft staff in the Discord or the flying, so they probably weren't doing anything. They're all talking about how they just keep walking in. Interesting. That's good. They made a change at least. Wow. Saving drone and drone face here is fine. Yeah, like, there's there's no major issue with that. Hmm. Potential master? That's interesting. 
I will say the enemy team is actually like playing like some pretty interesting siege in the sense that like they're not picking like the meta sites first. Arguably, you, you can make the the argument for downstairs uh, there being like the most meta site, but it's pretty interesting how they're playing it, and I'm actually liking how the enemy team is, is like playing like their operator lineup. Like oh, like I'm seeing a castle and a leisure that's pretty strong here. Uh, the lineup here uh, again is pretty strong. I really am not the biggest fan of having three roam centric clearers. Uh, honestly, I, I would kind of forego if, if we're gonna be honest here. I really just forego the jackal, even though this is a very uh, rotation heavy map um you i like they're they're all useful in their own way i would honestly like maybe reduce like i, I would either get rid of the dokubi or the grim and potentially play someone a little bit more oomph here um if he wants to play like so that room clear thing then like, you could play the the line with the amps um or honestly if you're just playing it for area denial you could play a capital this is also going to give him smokes um so overall like i'm not too sure about the operator lineup um they did win round one but that seemed like a more frag heavy composition um so we're, we're gonna see how this goes Their ace is already dead, so this is basically this round is almost dead on the water. They have no hard breach. You don't really necessarily need hard breach for this map, though it would help out if you could just kind of open up another angle uh, through a wall and just kind of like displace people. So this is interesting. Uh, we'll kind of see how it plays out from here. Drone work is pretty good. Ooh, the red ping on the drone kind of cringe. Uh, this is going to you know let the bandit know, hey, there is a guy on a drone in here. So he's going to kind of actively seek that out. So hopefully the guy who is playing Rock Hall is going to swing this. And that varsity is communicating that properly to that guy in Rock Hall. What? No way, that's great. So here's a mass issue that I'm seeing. And this is honestly an issue that plagues a lot of people. Potentially, I'll make a video on this. But the varsity is actively on his, dr on his drone. It's like, you know, you have two minutes left. So you have a decent amount of time. But like, he's not really helping anyone. He's just kind of here pressuring the bandit with the drone and the information. This is a good thing in some cases, but this is actually hindering him right now. And the reason why this is hindering varsity is uh, it's actually, it's, it's pretty simple. Like he's, he's not actively in, in the game. Like, yes, he's pressuring the bandit, but he would potentially have more pressure if the ace who died hopped on his drone yellow pinged and gave calls where the bandit was so he and his person rock hall could then pinch the bandit I, it seems like it would be a more impactful play here um so we'll see how this plays out so now at this point after he's red pinged him a bunch he's lost his drone so he's actually lost a piece of utility if we just set it up under uh that little kind of those little cart and the little boxes in, in the corner of that room or kind of left it anywhere else and had his teammates a yellow ping for him rather than red ping he would actually kept that drone so his drone economy is kind of hindered now because of that that play and he's effectively done nothing besides just kind of you know annoy the bandit a little bit So I, I'm 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 a fan of this play. Uh, and the reason why I'm a fan of this play is a he's Doka be called, so he knows he can dry swing. It'd be nice if we had some flash and some backup utility. But the Doka be call is enough to kind of understand. Hey, I know where the bandit is, and then he he took that and he was able to kind of maneuver in there. He's a three speed. He's a good gun, so he's able to take that gunfight. So that was actually a pretty good play and pretty proactive from Mister Varsity Gaming. I like this a lot. So he's dry peeking the Mira, and I know there is a Mira. It looks like his Iana was able to get some kills there, which is super, super clutch. Love to see that from the Iana. Um, but yeah, overall, like uh, this is actually pretty smart. So what he's doing is he's he's throwing his um, Grimbies on the doorway and behind the doorway. So if anyone playing that Mira decides to swing, they have to hit the Grimbies. And then even if he does die, he's getting some pretty pretty solid value out of that. True. Get the Varsity Gaming Charm. Support Varsity. He's been a content creator in the scene forever. We recommend doing that. Get that girl you like and win all your games. No reason doesn't work though. I'm turning to you. This is bad. No, no. I'm a nice person. What name one mean thing I've ever said to you? Uh, Ooh, Brava. I'm liking the Brava pick. Um, you know, they've kind of ran like some electric operators, uh, not necessarily some trap operators, like not not really, um, to like to the same extent, but it's actually pretty solid to kind of remove um the Fenrir off the board and kind of like uh, neutralize him to to an extent, which okay. they are running. Down again, ooh, so Brava's really good here. Brava counters two of the operators so far, so I'm really liking this read from varsity. And Mozzie. Okay, not bad. So he, he sacrifices his drone here. This is actually really smart. So what he's done here is he basically just sacrifices his drone to the Mozzie pest. He's now going to take his drone back with the Brava. So he's going to have both his drones again. And his, his Brava can kind of move freely into the site and hit those Capkins as, as well as also just get information and hack some other things as well. So this is a pretty smart play from, from him so far, honestly. Um, so I'm, I'm not hating it. I actually like this a lot. This is what I do is Brava. And I think it's probably the most optimal strategy to use Brava in this case. 
All right, I will say, however, that was a little bit dumb. So what he did there is he, he took back his drone and then he ran his Brava into the thing and then it died. What I would have done is take back my drone, then put my drone in, get some information to see where the utility is placed and then take my Brava there in the most direct form. But because he took his drone and then just put the Brava straight in, it, his Brava drone got shot, meaning he has one less Brava drone, which means he, his drone economy and his utility is kind of hindered quite quite heavily there. So, I mean, that, that was, like, great. Like, he got on his drone, but it would have been much better. Like, a million times better if uh, he just did that from the beginning. But now, he's going to try to kind of brute force it looks like his next Bravo drone. So, we'll see how it plays out. Okay. So, he's, he's gotten rid of all of his Bravo drones. So, he has no utility. And he's functionally only a gun now. I'm not too sure how I like this. So I actually don't hate this. He's applying pressure on the window. This isn't bad, but I, again, I, this is one of those things where like I really did wish he would push with his team. It's the same issue I had with the previous round uh, where he was being too passive and he's kind of off doing his own thing. In this case, it's a little bit more forgivable uh, because he is pressuring uh, the window here into kitchen and he's kind of applying that pressure, pulling anyone off from keg, kind of like making his presence known, uh, meaning anyone in, in Sunrise can't really fall back safely to kitchen. So they have to keep that in the back of their mind. There's pretty good pressure uh, application here. That being said, again, I really do wish he was with his teammate. His teammates are dying, and he's not in a position to get any of the refrags because he is by himself in a position, like, on an island. Now he's rotating his teammate. Nice. Uh, this is good. That's what you'd like to see. So he knows at least one or two in kitchen. He knows one sunrise. So they have, they have different information, like, where they are. They know one's cool vibes. So, I uh, don't fault the Varsity in this one. Honestly, his teammate kind of just pushed up too too quickly. But, like, Varsity, like, if he was with his teammates earlier in the round, uh, or even, like, just kind of closer to his teammate there, he would have been, uh, you know, had the ability or opportunity to refrag his teammate, uh, that kind of equalizing man advantage, uh, back down to, like, just a neutral state. Uh, but because, again, he's by himself doing his own thing, uh, he is kind of getting that... Uh, just kind of marked against him. So, uh, so far, like, uh, he, mechanically, I, I don't see anything too bad, but it seems like the game sense that he has and, and the way in which he's playing Siege uh, is unoptimal for success here. And uh, I, I mean, it just looks like what a gold would do, to be honest, a gold or a plat player. Uh, his aim is definitely, like, easily emerald. Um, he just really just does come to seem like he's, like, platting out right now. And I know Varsity's better than that because I've, I've played him and he's, he's definitely slammed me a few times, but I've also slammed him my fair share of times. Uh, that being said right now, not, not really, you know, insane stuff I'm seeing out of him. <sighs> what's what's the, what's the, what's the pick here? He has the Oryx pick. I don't hate it. Uh, I think Oryx is pretty strong on this map. Massive reaction, but if you are aggressive with Titan, you have a natural advantage. If you hold an angle with Titan, you get fucked. That's the way I see a lot of people who are the super high thing, which is doing like a follow feed over and over again. Because if you can't see them, they can just shoot you. Hey, he's he spitting. He's spitting, chat. Hey, if you have a high ping chat, just swing. Literally pick Ash and like just run it down. Making rotates. Doing a decent amount of like soft destruction, honestly setting up site pretty strong. Uh, really kind of wish I had that level of my teammate. He's now going to be roaming in office, it looks like. Uh, this is actually pretty strong. Like the they have a Dokubi. This will be interesting. I'll, I'll see how he roams, but so far I actually do like the Oryx now the more I think about it. It allows him to be pretty versatile, allows him to apply a lot of pressure and maneuver around this map pretty quickly. And this map is kind of rotate heavy, rotate centric that we we're talking about earlier. He actually does have a fair amount of lead weight that he can kind of just position himself anywhere and get back to site. What's really nice is I can actually analyze like his his like roaming ability like pretty pretty heavily here because I, I mainly roam. That's my main position on defense is, is I'm the roamer and then flex on attack. Um, so so far like we're just kind of watching it and uh, you know he has his little root lockdown where he's going from office over here and then he's going down this hallway down to security down to main lobby. So he's functionally like like removing half of the bottom side of the map and this is something that uh, attackers will do. They'll take the bottom side of this map. Um, doesn't really matter whether it be sunrise, whether it be kitchen, whatever it may be. They just kind of get a foothold into the bottom side of the map and then they can work nades. They can work utility below they can clear out rumors uh that will be a thorn in their side later um but by him being down here he's actually applying a lot of pressure whether they know it or not on attack so i've been trying out see where he goes he's backing off he's applying pressure what i really don't like is it looks like they might have had three roamers down here the warden honestly down here makes a lot of sense so does the oryx I'm not really sure what the azami was doing but he's not varsity so i, I don't really care This is really smart from Varsity, so he's taking that gunfight, he's losing that gunfight actively, he's going to reposition and apply pressure somewhere else on the map, I like that a lot. Uh, some people who that are roamers, and just honestly, just players in general, they'll just bash their skull in uh, with multiple gunfights against the same people and they're losing. That gunfight is not advantageous for him to take at all, so by him removing himself from that situation and kind of moving around to somewhere else, this is actually the kind of the, the most effective thing that he could do right here. 
So he, he crossed there. That, that was kind of a dumb cross from Varsity. Uh, admittedly, he really honestly did not have a ton of information as to where they could be, though Amai isn't properly communicating to Varsity, telling, hey, there's still a guy on the balcony. Um, so I can understand why he tried to run across to get back to site because they are expecting an execute momentarily. That is the second Dokubi call. And because it's the second Dokubi call, there's a likelihood that they're going to execute. So there was a smart play by him to get back to site to kind of stave off that execution. However, um, just because of the lack of information, him crossing the double door there, not knowing that there's still a Dokubi outside, uh, did cost him his life. That's not necessarily his issue. It's more or less the Wamai not calling to him. But the overall play uh, from his roaming to him getting back to site and understanding the macro of this round has been pretty strong. Capkin. I'm liking the Capkin. So this is actually pretty smart here. Um, whether he read into it or not, or he was just going stupid. The Capkin's strong uh, for kind of like the following reason. So basically why he's playing Capkin is like they executed last and it looks like they're doing kind of a team execute all together at the same time. This is going to incur ship damage if they play Capkin. It also gives them an extra level of thing to think about when they're attacking. They can't just kind of attack uh, blindly. So this is actually pretty strong, all things considered. Um, so I'm actually liking this adjustment from Varsity here. Dude, chat, some days you're not feeling an operator. Me? I'm always feeling Echo. I'm always feeling Capital. Man, dude, sometimes I'll try to play like my secondary operators like a Brava or like a Solus. I'm just not feeling them. So I, you know, I'm just stuck on the Echo and Capital. I get it. He's right. Double Capcom on that door. Don't mind it because they're going to have to push through there to execute. Don't mind this. This isn't a very common entry point. I'm not the biggest fan of him double. Okay, so oh, wow, there's a lot that just happened that I don't like right there. So he double Capcom that door. They droned it. They're going to shoot both those Capcoms. It's likely that that's not going to be very profound. Uh, it's not going to be like, that profound is not even the word. It's likely that it's not going to be very productive to put them there. I would try to take one off. Also, uh, I, I do like to double Capcom because it, it's an instant kill, but I'd actually much rather five Capcoms kind of spurs out uh, around the map in, in places where there's high traffic and high likelihood that I'm going to get chip damage. I'm not trying to get a kill with the Capcom. I'm trying to slow down their assault. And I'm trying to do 40 to 20 to 40 damage um, so that when I take a gunfight with him, it takes one less bullet. Therefore, I don't have to necessarily worry about aiming for the head. Another good Capcom. So far, his Capcom play isn't bad. Doing another roam. I'm liking this. This is not a bad roam. Once you put down your Capcoms and your utility, as Capcom, honestly, you really should be roaming just kind of being a gun upstairs. So this is pretty smart. Uh, they have a one-for-one -one trade so far. The Izami going down early is not great. I don't know who they fragged, uh, but depending on who they fragged, maybe it is a worthwhile trade. Pretty good position from Varsity here. Uh, he's still playing close to site, so he can get back. This is a much more of a soft roam than it is a hard roam. Uh, I do like what I'm seeing. He's applying pressure upstairs, and because he's upstairs, he can jump down a courtyard. He can go down a hatch. He can go down another staircase. Um, so, you know, pretty effective uh, for him being up there. He's going to go back down and readjust. He knows there's one blue bar. He's I don't think he calms. Uh, he makes the smart play here. He jumps down. So far, he's been playing this pretty well. Unfortunately, he just lost the gunfight to uh, someone in a better position. Nothing that you can really do about that. Again, that kind of just comes down to his teammates. But honestly, he did kind of play that pretty well. I uh, was upstairs applying pressure, then was able to rotate down through courtyard to try to pick up that kill. Unfortunately, he's out of position and, and kind of just gets lit up from, from an awkward angle. Uh, nothing he could have really done there. Maybe hit the aim labs. Uh, but I don't think hitting the aim labs would have like effectively like fixed his, his positioning there. I, I think everything, that was one of those things where he played that pretty well, and he just unfortunately lost the gunfight. Things didn't go his way. I will say varsity reminds me quite a bit of myself in, in, in terms of like the way in which we play. Like we're very de defense centric players. Uh, I, I feel like, you know, we're strong on defense and like just the way he reads the game on defense is, is much, much, much better than his, the way he's reading it on attack. I feel like, uh, obviously I still like you a lot and I have the same issue where like, I just kind of screw off an attack and then on defense, because I'm a roamer, I can actually screw off and, and, and have impact. The Oryx. I don't mind it. Hmm, Oryx on site is interesting. Uh, I mean, it can be useful if you're going to take gunfights and reposition. It, it can actually be super useful. Taking a lot of aggressive dry gunfights here. I'm liking this zombie setup here. Gets a nice kill there or supports it. Nice. Gets a kill lobby. Pretty good. Vital going. Nice swing. Nice shot. Not bad. I honestly wouldn't have played Oryx on site there, but it was a smart adjustment from Varsity saying, hey, like my guys on site are getting kind of dunked on. Um, so he just kind of played an operator he was comfortable with on site. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. If you're feeling an operator or you have an affinity to an operator and maybe like that operator is a roamer or that's an anchor and you want to play a different style with that. Okay, makes sense. He saw the adjustment where, hey, I'm getting kind of destroyed off site. I'm going to play an operator I'm comfortable with on site and it proves useful uh, getting two kills and assists. So can't complain. Setting up site, I mean, pretty, pretty bog standard stuff right there. Nothing crazy. Default setup. Yeah, I mean, this setup looks fairly normal. I, I have no, like, crazy, like, like anything, like, 
doing the same thing to the last round. If it works one round, hey, it'll work again. So, I mean, oh, I like that idea. I like that ideology. Ball Fondler going crazy over, over there. There's another gunfight. That's not great. Comms was fine. Mm, I just feel like, uh, again, so I, I, nothing really he could have done there. Uh, he could have won the one, uh, potentially disengage after seeing that individual and kind of holding a different angle uh, that's more advantageous to him than fighting it. But honestly, he was already in the advantageous position. It's one of those things where he just loses and it's like not really his fault. It's kind of how Siege is. Oh, Vital FG is having a great game. Oh, never mind. He's dead. <laughs> Oh, that was a nice try. Mmm. Okay. So here's the thing. I like the um, I, I like the idea of the Amaru Rush. Here's what I don't like about the uh, Amaru Rush idea here is when I hear Amaru Rush, I really want that paired with a with a Dokubir or a Lion, just so I have an extra like element where I can I can kind of impact the route. So the Amaru Rush is, is is an interesting idea against these guys. These guys are playing like kind of structured, so maybe an Amaru Rush will break up that structure. But if I just had like a Dokubi call so I can get some information or a line where I can actually have more space for myself, that'd make more sense. So I, I hope someone here uh, in prep phase picks into that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Me. Me. Every day I wake up. And Q. Sorry, Greg. I love you, but actually, Greg's pretty confident. Today, though, cost me my elo. I ended up going Nomad. Not bad. I actually like the Nomad. I don't know if they're doing like any crazy flanks here, but like honestly, just to keep the rumors at bay, which is again, a, this is a very like frag heavy team, makes a lot of sense. I like getting the info here and then pushing in. Uh, I really kind of wish he droned out Penthouse more because he is susceptible to a flank uh, behind him, although he's Nomad, so he should be able to mitigate that with his with his uh, utility. Nice, effective roam clear right there from the team. I like that. Nice. That was good. That was a really good read from him. He knew that they had two roaming. He picked up one, and then he and then he watched the ninety hall just in case he rotates back that way to try to refrag his teammate. There's actually really smart positioning from Varsity and and good game sense and awareness. Oh, nice communication. Capkin to deny uh, just walking into sight, so they're they're actually effectively contesting it. So that's that's pretty smart. Ah, so the drone saw, and then he readjusted. This is what I would like to see previously. Sitting on site. So, uh, I feel like I would want to see him actually, like, kind of pair up with a teammate here. I know he's supporting the Azami from this position, but I would really like to see him play with the Azami in, in kind of a more structured environment. Maybe also the Wamai. Uh, but supporting the Azami here is fine. I uh, guess the refrag on the Azami there, is, which is good, is contesting main lobby, picks up the main lobby, and wins. Uh, honestly, like, the macro from him, overall, pretty good. The aim overall from him, pretty good. Like, at 7 and 5, I mean, a respectable finish considering he started off well, relatively weak. Um, so, I guess a few key takeaways. Uh, his macro on defense is, is very high. Uh, very smart and intelligent defend uh, like defense player. Uh, his attack does seem a little bit lackluster. Now my sample size is only this vod, but he said this was a pretty good one. Um, so I'll leave that to that. Leave that like to your imagination. Uh, I mean, over time game, everyone on his team had relatively equal uh, contribution, which is which is very rare. You don't see that very often. Uh, I feel like overall the communication and, and the comms could have been better. I feel like his attack is is really lackluster and is, is one of the weaker uh, parts of his game. It does seem like he likes to solo uh, a lot, which is which is fine. He's playing solo operators, so operator selection isn't bad. Um, his understanding and adjustment on defense again is very strong and it seems like that is to the case on attack as well he's he's picking the right operators he's not playing them correctly or in the correct areas on attack um so overall is varsity good i think varsity is a very effective player if you want to learn how to play defense he plays a really strong defense game uh it may not li look like it but when he's roaming he's it's actually a very effective roamer uh he understands how to position he understands when to take gunfights and when not to take gunfights when to maneuver around the map uh, so it seems like he's a very intelligent defense player on attack you know uh, your mileage may vary, but if you're a solo queue player, I think if you modeled your game after Varsity, it'd be pretty good. So Varsity gets one thumb up from Vexian uh, in general and two thumbs up for defense because he's, he's actually a pretty strong defense player. Um, overall, probably would give Varsity, like, yeah, two thumbs up uh, just in general. One thumb up, two thumbs up. We'll give him, you know what, we'll give him one and a half thumbs up as a player. So overall, not bad. Uh, would recommend watching Varsity. And I think Varsity is a certified good player.